Hello, this video is an introduction to Threads Data Server. We will cover what Threads is, how you can configure it, and then have a demo on creating a Threads container using Docker. So the basics of Threads are that it is a web server software written in Java. It is intended for multi-dimensional array data, usually NetCDF, GRIB, or HDF data. It's developed by UCAR uh, and the Unidata program. They maintain the NetCDF formats. They are a reputable organization on geospatial data in this format. It requires that your data follow the climate and forecast conventions. These are organizational conventions, things like naming patterns and metadata requirements. You must follow these for threads to work. Uh, it provides multiple data services, uh, such as OpenDAP and NetCDF subset service, and it also provides the OGC web mapping service for any of the data that you give to Threads. Threads is configured by four XML files, which we will look at in the video. The first and most important for the beginner level is catalog.xml. It configures what uh, the available mapping and data services are through threads. Uh, it determines where threads looks for data on the server. It controls the URL patterns used to navigate threads. Uh, it controls naming, a variety of things. These are the most important though. Enhanced catalog.xml is next. This is just an extension of catalog.xml. Anything you put in catalog can be put in enhanced catalog for convenience or organization. Uh, Threadsconfig.xml is the third. This configures uh, really technical parts of threads, like web security, turning in on and off different features, caching data. Uh, you should really consult the documentation before editing this. This is an advanced catalog for you to look at. WMSconfig.xml is the final file. This contains defaults for the WMS services. You shouldn't need to change this often or at all. This is just uh, uh, there for if you need that though. So the steps to create a Docker container of threads is first to install Docker. You'll need access to the command line interface. You can Google instructions on how to get that on your computer. Next is you will need to download or create a Docker Compose YAML file for threads. There are examples of these online. I will provide one. The most important thing is that you need to mount the data on your computer to the container. And this is the path that you need to follow. This is user local Tomcat content threads public data. It's a mouthful, but that's the path inside the container where your data needs to be mounted in order for threads to find it. Then you're going to use docker compose up to create the container. We're then going to enter the container through our command line, modify the catalogs. Uh, then we will exit and restart the container so that the changes we made take effect. And that's it. Okay, now we will go through these steps one at a time and create a threads container. So I will not demonstrate installing Docker. You should be able to handle that for your own system. Just make sure you have access to the Docker command line interface. The first thing that you'll need is a Docker Compose YAML. I have a GitHub repository, which will be linked in this video, uh, that contains a threads folder, and there's a Docker Compose file in it, and also an example of the catalog.xml file. This catalog shows roughly what your file should look like after you've done the edits, which I will demonstrate. So this is available for your reference. I'm going to copy this Docker Compose file. Over here I have Docker running, I have a terminal window open, and I have a finder window open. This terminal window is open to the same directory as my finder window. So the first thing I need to do is make my docker compose file. So I will make a new file. And then I'm going to use nano to edit the contents. I'm going to paste in the sample that I copied from GitHub. And I'm going to need to edit 
this beginning part. This is where I will specify a path to data on my local computer. And then this part on the right is the path that I provided you. This is where in the container your data need to go. On my computer, the path is users slash rchails slash tech tutorials. And the, the other thing you'll need to, I need to change for this demonstration is I'm gonna name my container threads demo uh, because I already have a threads container running on my machine so I don't wanna have a conflict for the name. But everything else looks good so I'm gonna save. Now going back over to my steps, the next thing I'm gonna do is run docker compose up and this is we'll, we'll create a new container using everything that I've specified in this docker compose file. So docker compose up dash d. Now this is working and when it's done, I'm gonna see this line show up. This shows me that it's working on a new container, just turned to running, which means it's finished. So now I can go through this next step, which is I'm gonna enter the container through the command line and edit the config files, the XML files. The command for that is docker exec dash it and then the container name, yours could be threads, mine is gonna be threads demo because I had to change it for my machine and then bash. So I will do docker exec dash it threads demo bash. And now I'm inside the container in my command line. I need to change directories to where thread stores all of its config files. So user local tomcats, that's where you start when you enter the container. And then I, I need to change directories to content slash threads. So by list, I see I have a content file here, or folder, so cd contents. And there's my threads folder, so I'll cd into that. And then I'll do list it like this so we can read it easier. This cache directory is where thread stores its temporary data. Don't need to worry about that. Catalog.xml is the one we're going to be editing. Then I have enhanced uh, catalog, threads config, and WMS config. Those are the other four or other three XML files that I mentioned in the slideshow. Public is where we want our data sets to be so that they're available to, uh, through threads and logs uh, you don't need to worry about for this demonstration, but that's where you can find debugging information if that's uh, uh, needed later on. So going back over to my steps, I see that I need to edit catalog.xml. So I will use vi since that's the text editor that's available by default. Uh, oh, oops, not HTML. By catalog.xml. All right. So I see, let me get my window a little larger. So that my first entry in the file is this XML tag. Don't change that. Next, I have a catalog tag. This is where you specify the name of the catalog. Uh, I will change this to say threads demo. Oops, gotta go into threads demo catalog. Um, then these other namespaces and schemas, you don't need to worry about changing. Uh, my next tag is the service tag. This is where I list all of the mapping and data services I want to be available to threads. By default, OpenDAP, DAP4, and HTTP are available. But below that, Web Coverage Service, Web Mapping Service, and NetCDF Subset Service are all uh, options but are commented out. So if you go to each of these lines and delete the dashes and exclamation points so that they're uncommented, they will be available. Uh, next, this is an example of specifying additional uh, information about uh, DAP. We don't need to worry about that. Dataset root, this one is important. This is the path relative to where we were, where threads will look for data. We want to change that to just content. Then these next lines are examples of linking to a specific data set. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these. 
You'll notice though that you have the option to uh, path to a specific data set and list explicitly what services are available for it, the type of data it is, and so forth. But we are going to mount a whole folder of data, so we don't want to include these. All right, the next tag is dataset scan. This is the one you're going to want to use most of the time. This lets you scan a directory or a, a folder. That's what it's uh, trying to say. You can name it, give it an ID, uh, give it a path in the URLs, and this location tag we're going to need, to need to change. We want that to match our root from above, so I'll delete uh, the remainder and leave just content. This metadata information, do not change. This is very important that it stay the way it is. Uh, filter is how we limit what files we want to show. You use an include tag and then wildcard. You can use star uh, .nc would match any file name that ends with .nc or perhaps I'm interested in um, star.nc4. If I have netcdf4 files, I could have a include wildcard equals star, just like that, and I'll get everything. Or I could have star.grib, or I could use uh, any other combination to filter out exactly the data sets I want. This last uh, tag is catalog ref. This links to additional catalog files, specifically the enhanced catalog. So you can have as many of those additional files as you need to keep this organized. I won't go through the rest of the XML files, but you're welcome to browse those. So I'm done editing this. I'm going to escape, save my changes. Now I can exit the container. Now I can do docker restart threads demo. It's important that you don't do docker compose down and then docker compose up again because that will completely rebuild the container and you will lose the edits that you made to the file. You just want to restart and keep the changes that you made to the files. In the future, if you're doing this in a production server or you're going to be rebuilding all the time, it's probably worth your time to mount the catalogs files, those XML files from your local computer so that they persist across every container that you use. But now that I've restarted my container, I can come up here and see that it is running. I've got it on port 7000, so I can come over to my browser, go to localhost 7000 slash thread slash catalog dot HTML, just like it's suggesting for me. And now I see all of my data. If I go to test all files in a directory, this was the name that we gave it in the catalog. We can change that if we want. Test data is the stuff that we started with. We put our stuff into data. And now, if I compare to my finder window in the tech tutorials folder, that's what I mounted with the Docker Compose. I should have a data directory, a Docker Compose directory. And this DS store is available also because I included a the wildcard include star tag. You don't need to include that, but I, I see my data here and that's the important part. So if I go into data, here are my GLDAS files. I can gonna click on one of them as an example. I see all six of my data services are available. I can verify that my web mapping services are working correctly if I click on the WMS link and it should show me this get, get capabilities XML document. And if you skim through this, you'll know that it worked properly if you skim through this metadata information and find layers and you start to see uh, various coordinate systems uh, available, names of layers that you can query, styling information. If you see this part right here, then you know that it's working, uh, at least threads is, is working. You might have additional errors in your data that you'll have to go find, but the mapping service is operating correctly. So I'm going to exit that now, and I've now built my container. I can use it for mapping services or data services. When I am done, I can do docker stop threads demo. 
So I've now stopped my threads container. I can do Docker start threads demo when I need to begin working with it again. If you have any additional questions, I have provided links to resources and to the GitHub repository in the description of the video. Uh, thank you very much.